Hi, I'm Jennifer Ackerman Haywood, and today I'm going to show you how to complete the Craft Sanity Embroidery Sampler and turn that into a mask. So I know we're living in some weird times. I never imagined I would be making a mask embroidery sampler, but that's what I did. I was making a lot of masks to give away, and I didn't want to make masks to sell. Um, I just make masks, completed masks to give away, but then I thought, you know, if I'm going to make a mask for myself, I wanted to make fun ones. So I carved a block, actually two blocks, out of linoleum and um, printed them. So these assemble, like this is, they print them out bigger than they need to be and then um, allow for a seam allowance. Run them through my press. This is my turquoise baby press and the fleet of press entity presses. Um, printed them here in my studio. It's, I'm still in the process of setting up. So that's, if you're wondering why I'm like hugging a wall, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I still have some setup to do. We'll be showing you more of the studio on an upcoming video. Um, when I print them out, they look like this. And um, what I do is I add on some interfacing and I'll show you once I get over by the sewing machine. Uh, this is a Pellin lightweight interfacing that goes on the back. Some of you ordered a kit, so you got that included with your uh, sampler. And some of you ordered just this, and that's fine. So you can just put your uh, iron some Pellin lightweight usable um, interfacing on there, and you can get stitching. I do want to point something out. I did have someone contact me and say, if you're making a mask, aren't you afraid of having a bunch of holes in it? Because obviously we're trying to prevent droplets from going out and contaminating everyone. Um, absolutely, that is a, that's a concern that if you have that concern, uh, you can add the interfacing on after you do the embroidery. Just know that if you do that, some of these end pieces are going to show. So um, you might have some knots and things that might show through the fabric. So when you put the interfacing on and then stitch, then uh, you're not gonna have those threads showing through the front of your fabric. If you don't really care about that, that's fine. And keep in mind too, that once you get done with the embroidery, we're adding a backing fabric. So uh, I use flannel on mine. So um, obviously, if you're gonna go out for a jog or something, you don't wanna have flannel inside your mask. Uh, in that case, I'd actually recommend buying a wicking athletic mask. Now there's a mask for everything. So this is, this is kind of a going to the grocery store, um, running your errands kind of mask. I think in wintertime, it'll be especially nice to have a, a warm mask, but, um, but just think about what, how you plan to use your mask and decide, are you gonna use interfacing at all? Um, are you going to put it on before or after you stitch? I put mine on before I stitch. One of the reasons why I do that is I found that I've also done some of these samplers where I will cut the pieces out and sew them together before I even start stitching. So I've done that just so I can kind of see what I'm doing and um, fit it into my bag easier. And then I'll use a three inch hoop and I can put that on there and stretch out some of the fabric. But some of it I'm just doing by hand, just holding it. So keep in mind that for embroidery, you don't need to always be stretching your fabric. It's it's not totally um, required. You can do a lot with a little. So we're going to move on and I'm gonna actually show you the assembly of the mask. So we're gonna move on from this point. So this one is another sample that I did. I just used three colors here. And now I'm, I'm at a point where I'm ready to cut it out and start sewing it together. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to do. Okay, so we're going to assemble a mask. This one is one that I already did, has a lining that is flannel. This is the sampler on the outside, and that comes in two pieces that are sewn together. And you can sew them together either before or after you do your sampler. For this sampler, I used a hoop and just stitched the design. Notice I did not stitch right here. You could if you wanted to, when you fold it over, that ends up on the inside. You just have to decide if you want stitching on the side of your face. I decided I did not want that, so I just left it plain. Also note that I did not stitch around the edge here, because this is just your seam allowance, and it will not show. So if I stitched along the edge, it'd just be kind of like getting in the way of the sewing, so I wouldn't recommend going, you know, so, uh, stitching along there. Uh, you could come back if you wanted and do some decorative edge after it's put together if you wanted to. You also can fill this in. This is a simple back stitch that I've done to just outline the circles. I'm going to show those of you who may not know 
um, may not be familiar with, with embroidery, a backstitch, you just come in from the, I'm just going to come up from the bottom here and backstitch is basically, I'm just going to come up and then circle back here. And of course, using a hoop makes it a little bit easier to do this. I'm just demonstrating a couple stitches here. I'm going to come up again, like so, go out a little bit, come up, just like that. Always coming back to fill in the gap in between. All right, so there are a lot of videos and I actually have a whole other video on uh, showing some embroidery stitches for another sampler design. So you can check that out and there's a lot of good tutorials on YouTube. So if you want to search for any fancy stitches, you can find some great videos to support that. Okay, so now that we have, this is a completed, I did all the stitching that I want to do. Um, I'm going to flip this over to show you the back. Now, there's a lot of knots in here. I tend to knot. Some people will do embroidery and they don't knot. They just leave the ends and don't worry about it. I do not. In a couple of spots, I was getting tired and I didn't notice. I didn't pull it all the way through. I'm showing this to you to let you know that this does not have to be perfect. Uh, sometimes I go back and correct this when I notice. Other times I'm just like, oh, you know what? To heck with it. No big deal. Um, one thing that I did notice is that because this was sitting, it's been sitting out and kind of got thrown around in my bag a little bit, It, the interfacing kind of pulled away a little bit. So before I cut this, the pieces apart, I'm gonna just go over it and kind of reattach that. And I, kind of, I like the texture that's been created here. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these out and we're gonna go on to the next step. Okay, now we're ready to sew our pieces together. So what I have is a piece of chenille, it's just a chenille stem, also known as pipe cleaner. I cut one of them in half and then I just roll curl up the very edge and you can just by pushing it into a hard surface you can kind of fold it over and what you're trying to do is avoid it from poking the nose of the person who's going to be wearing this you don't want this to poke into their face so i just kind of curl up the edge and then just put it in like i said you can press it down on the table okay and then you can set that aside we don't need that for a bit uh i'm using ponytail holders just uh, as the the um, to keep the mask on your face and get these go around your ears now these look really small when I when I got them I thought man this is not gonna it's not really gonna work that's gonna be a tight squeeze what you do just stretch them out so I give them a good stretch and if you can see if you stretch them they get si noticeably larger in one stretch so you know I do that do that a couple times before I put them on. Now, if you're gonna do this for a kid size mask, uh, you might not wanna stretch them out as much. Now, this mask uh, is one size fits most. What that means is this will fit an adult. Um, this is a little bit big on my face when I sew right along this edge. What you can do, and this is kind of the decision time, you can decide, I would sew on this edge for all sizes in the center here, for the center part of your mask. It goes right over your nose. You can go in more on the other three sides. And I'll show you, I'll tell you when there's a good point to kind of just do a bigger seam allowance. The last part of this is that we need to have our lining fabric. Now I'm including flannel in the kits. However, if you want to go with something, something lighter, you definitely can do that and pick something that's comfortable. You know, just pick something that's going to be comfortable against your face. And, um, you know, if it's, you don't want to have something super thick, if you're have any kind of, um, issues with having thick fabric, uh, I think I use flannel just because it's soft and it seems to do the job. I've been wearing these masks around town and I, I do like the results. Okay. So here we go. We're going to pin this together. Now, this is not going to, when you sew this, there's going to be some puckering, it, it, it probably won't match up exactly as far as the stitching goes, and that's okay. It, I wasn't really intending for an exact symmetrical mat, match with this. So 
what I'm gonna do is just hold, use some needles to hold this together. Okay, so we're gonna move on. We're ready to sew this. Uh, this one I also have ready here. This is our lining fabric. The right sides are together, just like the right sides are together here. So I'm going to get, sew these real quick and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I'm gonna sew the lining fabric together first. I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. And I usually do all of these seams twice. Okay, I'm gonna take the pins out here and I'm going to, on all the pieces, I'm going to, it's a little bit curved, so I'm gonna just trim that every so often just so when I flip it, it won't be all bunched up. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this one. Now this one, since you can't see the line, I mean, you can see it, if you hold it up against the light, and I don't know if it shows on video or not, you can kind of see where the line is. If you can't see the line through it, don't worry. Just stitch at the edge of your, sew this together at the edge of your stitching. You know, because the stitching stops right at that seam allowance. So that's just start, you know, stop and start your stitching there. And again, this is not an exact science. So I'll remove my pins and take a peek at how that looks. And we'll see. Okay, so in this case, I have black line showing and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to sew inside this line. Now I do this twice anyway, so this is no big deal. Now, if you have a smaller face and or the person you um, are sewing for this for has a smaller face, you have some decisions to make. Um, so we have our finished piece, the insul your uh, Interfacing is in here. Before we turn it right side out, we're gonna trim that. Just make little slits up to the outermost line of stitching. You don't wanna cut through the stitching. If you cut through the stitching, then you're gonna put a hole right in your mask, which you don't wanna do. And the reason why we're doing this is it allows it to be turned right side out without bunching and so forth. So that is allow us to turn things out. Okay, so, and what you can do is you can iron this. You can press that. I think it's, it's doing okay. That seam is pretty, probably because I've reinforced it so much. So I'm just pulling this out here. Okay, so we are ready for the next part here. Um, we're gonna take our lining, which we've already trimmed Get this extra piece of thread off. And we are gonna have right sides facing. So this is the outside of the mask and this is the inside of the mask. We want that seam, the seam is gonna be facing out on each side. And I'm gonna just get the points up here. And I usually fold the seam so it goes opposite directions. It doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. And because I want to be able to see my stitching, I'm going to flip this around so I can kind of see what I'm stitching through and how close I am to that edge. Because I want to make sure that I'm at the edge of the stitching. And if, and that's about a quarter inch seam allowance. Now, if you want to make a smaller mask, you want to make this smaller, you can go in to a half inch seam allowance. You'll be stitching over sewing over some of your stitches. All right, I'm gonna get this pinned and we'll be right back. Okay, so our mask is pinned up and right sides are together. Seams are facing out on both sides. I'm gonna sew across the bottom a couple times here. Okay, so now we're gonna to switch to the top layer or the top edge here. Uh, we're going to start. Okay. 
Okay. You get rid of all those pins. And what you can do is you can you can take a peek in here and see how things are lining up and if you want to have it tighter. And I, I think what I'm going to do is when I um, the first pass, I sew kind of closer to the edge. I'm going to bring this pipe cleaner in and I'm going to sew inside this line a little bit for my second pass. Okay, so this is a pipe cleaner. And this one, just a refresher here. You curl in the edges. So I'm going to just fold it in half again. Okay, so I cut it a long piece in half to fit, and then I'm just cutting this in half. What I'm doing is using that as kind of like my center point. So at the center of the top of the nose, where your nose will go, I'm going to stitch right across. Just do a few stitch back and forth across. I'm going to do that at the edge of it as well. And go slow because sewing machines can be, they can get a little upset about stitching over things like this for, I mean, good reason. You could also do this uh, by hand if you're looking to be kinder to your machine. Uh, I kind of just, like I said, I'm kind of an off-road sewist here. And I found that this machine so far, and this is the kiss of death right here when I say, oh, it's been great so far, <laughs> I'm about to break my machine. Um, And what that's doing is just kind of tacking it in place. And sometimes I'll come in in between those points and do that again. And that's just holding it in place so I can come through and sew it again. If you find a better method, by all means, use it and then maybe send me an email and tell me what you do. And I will uh, maybe adopt what you're doing. I don't have all the answers, friends. I'm just trying to sort this out just like you. All right. All right, so that's that's not going anywhere, you know, and I'm gonna be able to sew this again. So it's right along here, it's, it's seeming pretty stable. Okay, so I'm gonna go back across again, and this time I'm gonna sew in a little bit, a little bit more into the design area. Now we're ready to turn it right side out. So this is always the fun part to see how this looks. Okay, so we turn it in right side out. I'm gonna grab my iron here and I'm gonna just go along these edges. Okay, I'm gonna put that. Okay, and again, that was just to kind of flatten things out. Okay, so now that I've turned it right side out, I did a little ironing on that seam. I'm gonna top stitch along the top edge and along the bottom edge. And this just gives it a nice finished look. And I'm going right at the very edge. Okay, we're gonna do that again on the bottom. Okay, so we have the top stitching done. Now I'm going to be getting ready to put these little ear holders or ear straps on, or the, uh, the little hair ties that are gonna hold the mask onto your ear. So the first step here is to just, I just fold this over the edge and eyeball it. And I just fold it down. You can put pins in here. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna fold it over and stitch. Okay, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Okay, got the edges folded over. Now what I'm going to do is fold up. Okay, so you see this line here? We're gonna fold up to that line. You gotta make sure you add in one of your ponytail holders. And we're gonna fold up to that line. 
So you want that line to basically, that line is going to be right where your fold is, okay? And you push, push your ponytail holder to the side. And this part, I, basically what I do first is I trace that first, that line that I go almost along that little seam that I just made. I'm going to trace that. And it helps to stretch this out so it's not, you're not fighting it as you're sewing. And just sew here, back stitch a little bit. And I just, I don't go off the edge of that, I just go up to the edge of it. You could go off the edge of it, it's not a big deal. I'm going to come back in and sew now at the edge of that folded over fabric. And you want to make sure that you're using a light colored fabrics or light colored thread. Use a light colored thread to do this. So when you sew over your stitching, you can't really see. So you can't really see where, I, where the stitching happened. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I'm just trimming off all the little threads here so we have a nice finished look to the mask and it turned out pretty good <laughs> all right we have a finished mask yay uh i i love making these i don't know why um i wish i didn't have to make them but i do like making embroidered masks but i like embroidering pretty much everything so i think it's you know i figured i'd bring embroidery to mask making and maybe I'd feel better about the whole aspect that we have to make masks because this is pretty crazy. Um, but my hope is that if you embroider a mask and embellish it, make it your own, it will kind of provide you a little bit of a calming, um, just feel a little more calm in a stressful time. Now, obviously this is not for mass, mass production. I have another video that will show you how to make masks faster. There's a lot of great videos out there that will help you make masks quickly. If you're trying to do that for your business or for your family, friends, or local, um, you know, frontline uh, workers. So all that is very important. This is kind of a, a design that I'm intending for you, uh, dear crafter at home who likes to uh, embroider and if you want to make something slowly for yourself, um, have a little moment of zen during a crazy time. So that was the intention. Uh, you can, again, find these at craftsanityshop.com. They come with the you can just buy the sampler itself and mix it with all your own um, fabrics, your own interfacing and uh, lining fabric, and then supply the hair ties. Or you can buy a kit with all those things that you need uh, and then just buy your own embroidery floss so you can pick that out. If you make a mask, if you embroider one of the Craft Sanity mask samplers, I would love for you to tag me on Instagram. So just tag Craft Sanity and um, I'll share some of those in my stories because I'd love for you guys to get to see what everyone's stitching. Yeah, I wish you guys all the best. Be safe and remember to mask up. And cry sandy, my friends. It works for me.